Hey guys, welcome back to JLEG. So today we're gonna have this little funky shape that we're working on, um, which I wasn't gonna make a tutorial for, but someone requested that I do. So this is kind of like a concave spring, uh, or you can also call it a uh, spiral spring. But it, the unique thing about it is that it starts small on the bottom and gets thicker as it goes up. So let's go over here and see what we have. And there are two ways of making it happen. Uh, but I chose the revolutions as the easier one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off on the front plane. We're going to get closer. And the cool thing about it is it revolves around the pole. So it's a, a constant instead of what we're going to show you right now. I'm going to show you the reason why I'm making this tutorial is because usually, as you can see, so we have 20 millimeters here and we're going to revolve it around the center axis. Let's go up by 120 and 1300, for example. So the problem is usually when you revolve it and what you would normally do is you just simply scale one side more than the other. However, in this case, when you try to accomplish this task automatically, if you look closely here, one side gets thinner while the other side stays thicker. So this side is thick this side is thin, so we cannot do this process automatically. Because you can see it's twisted and not proper, unless you look from this side. So what we need to do is some manual work. So we have this little sketch here, and I've experimented with this already, so I've figured out what you need to do, and that's why I'm making this tutorial. But the trick is to revolve your shape around only 180 degrees so only half a circle at a time and then you also have to adjust so again you would scale this part right here but you can only go about a factor of 1.2 so 120 uh, percent because if you go any more the distance that you have here will not allow you to do a lot more than that because it will uh, create an uneven shape so what we need to do is take this part sketch the circle here and we should have done this before but since i'm showing you I'm, the process is slightly different let's hide our shape so we can work with our circle and we need to sketch a line not a circle but a line that goes over here because we want to use this as a reference point so when we're going to scale this circle we want to scale it right there and not in the center because we're trying to uh, revolve this uh, shape around this post sort of thing. So we're gonna scale this 1.2, so that's 120%. And since that increased the size from 20 millimeters, as you can see down here, to 24 millimeters, we have an excess here on this plane of two millimeters. So we need to scoot that circle up before we do anything else. So two millimeters up, then we reveal our shape back to normal. And now we have to match that shape to the sketch that we have. So we simply do that by scaling that outer shell there. So 1.2. And then we move, rotate two millimeters that way and two millimeters away. That way you can see it's a constant here. If we do section view, you can see it goes straight down and it does not interfere with this shape. So, I mean, if you were just doing a model you know, for a video, it wouldn't matter. But if you're gonna 3D print or manufacture this, it makes a big difference. And uh, don't forget about tolerances if you actually do plan on manufacturing something like this. But let's go ahead and take those away. So, and now from this point, what we need to do is just for this specific part, hide the sketch and we need to move our model up because we're gonna have a twist, right? So we're gonna move it up, let's say, Let's do 30 so we can get a constant shape all across as it's revolving. Or is that too much? Let's try 25 maybe. Okay, so from this point on, we have to simply repeat the process. Uh, and I'm going to do it perfectly because if you just go ahead and revolve and do the process, you're going to get, again, it's going to go and interfere into the model, right? So we need to use the sketch as a reference. Um, so let's tools 
revolve this around the center axis again and raise it up by 25 and again we have to make 180 degrees and we have to make it a constant upwards because if you change the scaling for example you're going up 25 millimeters if you do it differently look at that see this part right here will not look that good it's going to shift and it's going to be a twist that's not natural so we have to do a constant in this case 25 millimeters so again we're going to go over here and we're going to sketch another circle so um in this case though however i also let me show you another issue we want to sketch the circle in the center right and uh, we're not getting exactly in the center because this turns out to be a spline see usually when you do that to the end of the circle you get like a little point here so you can draw in the middle but this is actually a spline not a circle so one thing we can do is we need to hide our shapes and we need to take this sketch that we had before don't forget the line and we need to move it up by 25 like we did the first time and then we need to copy it and move it up 25 again for the second one so i guess 50 in this case because it did only halfway so 25 25 from that point and then we have to get to the center and revolve it 180 degrees half halfway so let's see did we get it right or did i did my math wrong oh did my math wrong so 25 after all all right so now we have that circle to use as a reference point instead of using that spline as a reference point so let's hide the body again and we need to transform and scale again using that as a reference okay so 1.2 all right now let's go back to our body and then transform scale use this as a reference to save yourself some time so you don't have to move so 1.2 Two. All right, then we simply hide the body again, transform, move, rotate, and we're going to take the new circle now, take the center point again, copy, revolve 180, then release the copy and move up by 25. All right, so as you can see, it's a manual process tools revolve this around the center axis up here then uh, don't forget to do 180 done transform move this up by 25 all right and then we're going to scale both the circle and the shape using this same reference point so 1.2 and as you can see it's starting to fall into shape and remember that we chose 25 millimeters and as you can see it's getting more compact compact here the distance between the shapes is getting smaller because it's getting thicker so uh, keep that in mind when you're designing yours so if you want it to be a specific shape plan ahead so that you don't get those artifacts in a sense all right so let's hide that, transform, rotate this. Don't forget to copy. So 100, no, oh, see, that's what the undo is for. Um, 180 degrees. Undo again, because I forgot to copy. <laughs> 180. And then up 25. And also, if you don't care about the constant, you could you can move these circles and the revolutions according to what you want it to look like. So, for example, if you wanted uh, the distance between these to be smaller or bigger, you simply move it up more. So it just depends on what you're trying to achieve. So I'm just trying to show you how it's done. So for, for this, it's fine, but just keep that in mind. 
So transform, actually with tools, revolve this center. We can move it up 25. After we do 180 apparently, because those are crashing into each other. So we can't do that, but we can do it with this. All right. And then we go ahead and transform scale, include the circles, but use that reference point and 1.2. Okay. So we can go on and on and on, but I just had to show you the process. And also another thing, as you can see here, this one is not as smooth as we would like. So what we can do Let's go ahead and hide those sketches. Transform, move. And we can adjust it so it looks even. So we were using 25, but it's getting super thick, all right? And now we need to do twice as much at 50 because it's twice as thick to make it look like a natural shape, which wasn't as important for the previous one because it was smaller. So let's. Let's go ahead and just group these real quick into a folder so I can hide them faster. And if you look at this old one, it was a lot smaller. So the changes were not as evident because you can see the big gap here and then the gap keeps getting smaller. But because this time I made it bigger, the gap is becoming more prevalent. And as you can see, it might've been a little too much even. So we can lower it just a tad whatever looks most natural. Okay, there we go. And then just to make it prettier, let's go and change this to the same material I used before. All right, so as you can see, you're getting your twisty twist, but it's growing in size. So don't forget to account for the gap here that you're gonna have and don't forget to use those reference point here. Remember the line. So use this reference point as you keep going up. So hope you <laughs> learned well how to do this. Uh, it definitely is not a common shape. It's something that's rare, uh, but it's still useful to know the process and to understand because while you could have done a loft, let me just show you why we didn't, all right? So imagine for a second, that we need to continue this, right? And we want to use the loft. Well, guess what? If we use this same sketch and we go revolve it 180 and we try to loft, well, just as an example here, you cannot loft a shape that is like 90 degrees. It just will not do this. So what you need to do for a loft is basically you take the same shape, you revolve it a bunch of times. And then you also have to move each one individually up. That's a bunch of work too. And unless your math is perfect, it, it's just not gonna look as good as the revolutions. Uh, but uh, let's keep going here just to show you. So the other problem is remember how when you twisted it in the beginning, I showed you it made one side skinny and the other side not. That's basically the same exact thing that happens with these ones. See, it's already twisting out of place and the shape is just not natural. So definitely don't do it with a loft. Just do it the way I told you by using the sketch, the circle rotating 180 degrees. It doesn't have to be this big. You can make it smaller, but yeah, this is the best method so far that I found. If you find a better one, let me know in the comments. That'd be great to know. I actually, I love to learn how to use this app even better all the time myself. So. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and come back for the next one. I'll show you guys even more 
And actually, I'm working on a helmet tutorial next. So if you want to learn how to make helmets that are accurate to your head, subscribe and follow, and I'll see you guys pretty soon. Bye-bye. Here at JLake 3 d our goal is to inspire and empower you to create your own amazing projects. Please support our work so that we can keep doing it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to see more.